He has an unusual expanding mechanism made from rack and pinion gears. Let me break down how it works. It starts with this little box with a gear wheel on it. There are holes in the sides of the box and you can put a rack through one of the holes and it meshes with the gear so that they form a rack and pinion mechanism. If you put another rack through the box in the other direction as well, then both racks mesh with the same pinion gear and when we move one rack, the other moves as well. Okay, fine. Next, let's attach a box to this rack and a rack to this box and add another rack going through the new box. Okay, so here we go. The box now has a rack attached to it. This rack now has a box and another rack going through it. Now, what's gonna happen when I move this rack through this box? Well, when I push this rack in, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull this rack this way. That's gonna move the two boxes together, which will also push this rack through this box, which will then make this rack go this direction through the box. Let's see what happens. So this is sort of spooky action at a distance. I do something over here and it makes something happen over here quite far away from where I'm working the mechanism. Well, you know what we need to do next, chain a whole bunch of these together. All right, here's a chain of seven boxes and racks. And we get this expanding mechanism. If you ignore the racks and just look at the boxes, they move apart and together like uh, you're scaling an object in a vector graphics program. As you go along the chain, the racks and boxes change height. So they're higher on this side and then they go down lower and lower and lower. And you need this so that the racks don't collide with each other. Right? This one needs to go underneath this one. I call these recursive racks because the way the mechanism works is like a recursive function. The position of each of the parts in the chain is determined by the positions of the previous two parts. So for example, here's this gray box and it's got this gray rack here and this gray rack here. So that's one of the parts. And here's this green box with a rack coming out of it. And its rack is meshing over here with this gear on the, the gray part, which is then meshing with this green part over here. So the recursion is that if you know where this gray part is and you know where this green part is, then you know where this green part is. It's determined by the position of these things here. And then that continues. This part and this part determine where this part is. And then this part and this part determine where this gray part is here. So and that the action is happening in this box, this gray rack here and this gray rack here uh, are sort of gearing together inside of this box. So again, if you know where this box is and its rack and you know where this box is, then that tells you where this one is. And that continues along the chain. Our geared cube is also a recursive mechanism. It's the same sort of thing. Once you know where this part and this part are, then that determines where this part is. So these three parts here interact. This is sort of a gearbox, and then this part here is the same as this gear, and this part here is the same as this gear. So these two gears mesh into each other in the gearbox formed by this one. And so again, knowing where this one and this one is tells you where this one is. And then knowing where this one and this one is tells you where this one is and so on down the chain. And we were inspired to make both of these mechanisms by Oscar van der Venter's tailspin mechanism, which I would also call a recursive mechanism. Again, the position of each part is determined by the position of the previous two parts. 
You could say that the recursive racks are not quite the same as these other two mechanisms, because there are extra rigid parts. These little wheels, these little gear wheels, are extra moving parts that are not part of the sort of recursive mechanism that we've seen in the other two. Well, the gear wheels are not strictly necessary. The important thing is that a box holds two racks together so that when one rack moves, so does the other. Here's a way to have that happen without the extra little gear wheel. If I hold this part still, say, then moving one of the other parts moves the third. The only problem with doing this kind of thing to make recursive racks is that there's a lot of friction with these diagonal gear teeth. And the little gear wheels here transfer force much better, which matters when you're trying to chain a bunch of these together. Here's another mechanism that looks very similar to the expanding contracting mechanism we've been looking at so far, but it does something completely different. Well, so first of all, spot the difference. What is actually the difference between this new mechanism and the old mechanism? And I'll give you a hint, it's to do with where the little gear wheels are. So on this new one, the gear wheels are all sort of pointing in towards the middle of the chain, whereas here, they're sort of pointing backwards along the chain or pointing forwards along the chain. And there's also a couple of differences in the racks just to mesh with the gear teeth. So for example, uh, this rack here is pointing this way, so it meets the gear here, whereas on this one, it pointed that way to meet the gear here. So, okay, um, before I show you what it does, what do you think? In this first mechanism, when we pull two boxes apart, the next pair of boxes also move apart. But here, in this new mechanism, it does the opposite. When I pull these two apart, these two come together. And then the two after them come apart, and then the two after those come together, and so on. So what it does is this. So, as I say, when this rack, pair of racks get longer, or the distance between these boxes get longer, the distance between these two get shorter, longer, shorter, and longer. And because they're alternating going one way and the other way, sort of 90 degrees, maybe we can turn it this way, and then you've got the vertical racks and the horizontal racks, and what's happening is that the distance between the boxes is sort of switching between being on the vertical racks and being on the horizontal racks. So what happens is that these boxes move diagonally. It's easier if I grab these two boxes in the middle. You can see all of the boxes here are moving diagonally relative to the vertical and horizontal axes. And if you try and work it by holding the boxes at either end of the chain, then you have to do this sort of twisting movement to get them to, to go. Finally, here are a couple of recursive mechanisms that mix racks with spur gears, as in Oscar's tailspin mechanism. So in all of the previous uh, recursive racks mechanisms that we've looked at, each of the parts consists of a box and then two racks, and then racks from the neighboring parts in the chain interact inside of the box. Here, I've got a box, this gray box here, I've got one rack coming out this direction, but also rigidly attached to this box is a spur gear. And this green box here has a spur, spur gear rigidly attached to it here, and then a rack coming out this way. And so what that means is you're going along with the recursive racks uh, chain when I pull or push this rack through here, it increases or decreases the distance between these. And this rack here, rather than causing another rack to move, it causes this gear to move. And then otherwise, it continues in the same way as it did for the recursive racks. So as I say, it's a mix between the recursive racks and Oscar's tailspin. So that's this one. What about this one? What does this do? So this one's a little bit more complicated still. 
it's got a couple of these in a chain. And notice what's happening is this pair of racks and this pair of racks are always parallel to each other as we move the mechanism. But at the same time, we've got a long distance between these two boxes and then short and then long. And when we work the mechanism, go all the way around, now they swatch around. Now it's short, long, short. So it's the same sort of idea of transferring force along the mechanism. This one is a little bit more like the uh, sort of diagonal moving boxes mechanism because it's switched across between short and long. Whereas this one here is a little bit more like the original expanding one because uh, these are both short racks here and they're both long here. So, so again, you can sort of play around with where the gears are and which side of the, the, the gear wheel the racks are on and so on to get different effects. All right, these are recursive racks. Thanks for watching.